Presented by Sega. Developed by AM2. Propeller Arena Aviation Battle Championship. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am your random gaming host, Random Gamer Ribbon, and today we are looking at a very nice little title. This, I'm sure some of you may be aware from as the announcer was shouting it out, is Propeller Arena Aviation Battle Championship. And I will be commentating over this as I think I, this one deserves some commentary just to provide some background. I'm not going to do a full long play, I'm just going to show you a sample of the various gameplay elements included in Propeller Arena Aviation Battle Championship. As this is an interesting one because unfortunately the game, as many of you are aware, was cancelled. This is a futuristic shooter flight simulator using biplanes yes if you in case you can hear the announcer in the background which is being drowned out by the rather awful um signed record label that i have to be a little bit careful because this is actually licensed music they used in game but it is pretty poor choice of music to say mildly it really doesn't suit the game at all but basically Supposedly, although they're calling out the names of all these World War II planes, this is set in the year 2045. So I'm going to show you a selection of the various gameplay modes and elements. I'm going to start by just having a quick gander at the options and the network modes that are in this build. So clearly this is a retail candidate version of the game. We don't know entirely where this is leaked from, but basically a number of builds of Propeller Arena have leaked. And as you can see here, this is virtually content complete as far as I'm aware. You have the VMU icons, everything's here. So you've got all the options and you even have the network mode. Although I should stress here, there isn't much I can show you in the network mode. In the home page won't work, of course. What I will say is that this mode would have almost the network mode would have almost certainly been pulled from the European version of the game because as you're aware that by the point about 2001 just every game with online mode was getting the online mode pulled for the European version. So this is clearly based on a US build. Now this is propeller stunt mode where you basically have a selection of mini games. You will see I'm going to quickly guide you through the very show you a sample of the various mini games in it. You will probably see one of the reasons this is cancelled from this mini game alone is. In this one, this is the first, mi no, this is the trick mini game where I basically have to perform stunt rolls. This is quite a simple one. There are varying degrees of stunts you have to perform and you have to get a various score. So there's a bronze, silver, gold medal. But as you can see, this one I'm flying over an airport. There are a variety of stages. Now, here's the thing. The gameplay is not bad. It's quite fun in short bursts. It's not good for long-term enjoyment. And there was some speculation at the time that the game wasn't great. It's quite good fun, but I can see it perhaps getting middling reviews if it had been released. It was planned for release in 2001, and it was developed by AM2 and it was going to be published by Sega. I'm not sure if there was an arcade version. It looks like this should have been an arcade game, but whether they plan to do the Dreamcast version first and the arcade version later, I'm not entirely sure. There is no arcade ROM as far as I'm aware, so maybe perhaps they cancelled the arcade version. I'm going to show you one from each of, so you've got Prella Stunt Challenges and Prella Agility. This challenge one, is probably one of the many reasons why this game had to be indefinitely delayed. I'm not even going to show you the tower stage where you're flying around a city. I would actually like to do a full long play at some point, but in this one I'm just going to do a sort of a gameplay sample and comment over the gameplay. But as you can see here, we are shooting down rockets in this mini game that is basically heading towards an airport. This game was cancelled in the US due to the tragedy that was the September the 11th terrorist attacks in 2001. Its provisory release date was the 19th of September 2001. I think that was only a provisory release date because at the time Peter Moore cancelled it and there's a direct interview with him. He quotes, he was told it was in test. 
by a tester and they said you basically need to come see this now and as a result it was immediately cancelled It's not bad fun, it's quite good fun in short bursts. And this challenge mode, there's, there's lots of different challenges. They're quite good fun, but the planes are slow to control. And I must admit, it does get pretty boring pretty quickly. The arcade mode is just eight rounds of verse matches, not much else. But this gets steadily harder, it gets pretty bland. The only change is the stage you're flying on. And some of the planes control like tanks. Some are quite versatile, others are so slow they're just not fun to use in the slightest. Now in this mode I've got to stop 10 rockets before they land on the ground. I think I can get away with 8 or 9 you're allowed, a couple of misses. As you can see there they hit the ground and they detonate something you could not have released in 2001 or even 2002 really. There were actually a number of games impacted in 2001 that had to be delayed or changed. So this was not the only one affected. If I'm being honest, comparing this to Iron Aces and Star Lancer, which are two other similar flight games released on the Dreamcast, I would say Iron Aces, or it's also known as, I think it's Zero Challenge or something, Zero Fighter, is a better game than this. It's got a much better single player campaign mode, and Star Lancer has an online multiplayer. Yes, it's a space simulator, but it plays similar. Ships are more maneuverable, and there's got a huge story mode. Star Lancer is also a better game than this, so I can see this is like a quick arcade game. So this is the agility challenge, and again, you just got to basically fly through the hoops. Fairly straightforward, I assume the later challenges get harder. It's a bit run-of-the-mill content if you know what I mean and I could see, as I said, I could see this getting quite middling reviews if it was released. I mean a lot of these games, the Dreamcast titles, a lot of the arcade games like Out Trigger, even the Crazy Taxi 2 port, Crazy Taxi 1, they weren't fleshed out conversions they didn't have a huge amount of additional content virtual tennis as well i'm actually playing that again at the minute and that i mean that has a world mode but some of the others when i think of them like out trigger there's not a lot of additional content confidential mission is largely a straight arcade port sega weren't great at adding lots of content to their dreamcast games i think partly was that was due to the size limit of the gd roms they weren't much bigger than CDs. And I think had the Dreamcast used a DVD drive it may have helped the system quite a lot. So we're going to jump into quick battle now and this is basically this just allows you to pick your fighter and just have a quick battle. So as you see there the game supports four players so in four players this is probably pretty damn good fun. In fact I kind of missed a lot of the couch co-op games now. Our developers are very lazy these days and don't do couch co-ops. So this is 8 beat 8 bit his ship. Uh, I think I did Phantom Island stage, or did I do Old Castle? There's a couple of some some of these stages are quite nice. You've got a couple one in the clouds. I think there's a, there's quite a few unlockables as well. There's at least according to Game Facts or Game FAQs, it is there's at least five unlockable planes, two additional stages, an additional difficulty, but you need to beat all the challenges and complete the game multiple times on the various difficulties. So this is the main meat and grind mode and it literally is just a straightforward dog fighting mode. There isn't much sort of variation, the only difference is the stage and the background. I'm reminded of Snoopy's Flying Ace at this point and I have to admit Snoopy's Flying Ace which we covered on the channel 
on the Xbox 360 is a much more dynamic and versatile game. There's a lot more differences between the various planes and there's a lot more how the stages really affect how you play some of the levels very differently. The stage design is much better. This the stage design is fairly simplistic. So it does feel very samey. This 8-bit ship is also an absolute nightmare to turn. It's got four guns so it shoots down the planes really quickly but it was incredibly slow to manoeuvre and turn and I found it just horrible. Admittedly I should have used some of the stunt trick manoeuvres more to help me manoeuvre around a bit. I think that's what you've really got to get to grips with. I didn't use them that much. I tried to fly this more like a traditional mode. I really wish this had like a proper campaign mode with flying through stages and doing various missions. It doesn't have that and it probably needed that. And I should also apologise for the music in the background. It, it was starting to grate on me by the end of this this small playthrough section as we sort of show you a sample of the game. At some point I would like to do a full playthrough of arcade mode, maybe even unlock all the secrets. But yeah, this is... the music was not good. And reading up on a few sites it appears that Sega quickly licensed some official bands. So I may even get a content ID on this video, but I must admit the licensed music is not good. It, it doesn't suit the gameplay, doesn't suit the sort of style, the feel of the game. And it's just some very bad singing, if I'm being honest. It's a shouty guy that drones on a bit, and they all sounded very similar, these songs. So the music sounded a bit hashed together quickly, and I suspect it probably was added in quickly, especially if you're doing cheap licenses. Now, the US release appeared to... This could be releasing in the US first. There's not much information on the Japanese and European releases, other than they were both also indefinitely delayed and never released. Even the press at the time in the European magazines had hinted they felt the game wasn't that good. But what, as I mentioned, is slightly odd is that I'm surprised there isn't retail copies of the game floating around if this was as close to release as what the initial report suggested, which was the 19th of September, because it would have had to have been in the warehouses. But as Peter Moore himself had said it had been in test at the time, that leaves me to believe I actually think the game was due to release in... October or November 2001. That's my industry experience. That's what my industry is telling me. The September date's actually incorrect and it was actually more October, November, regardless of the fact they still couldn't have released this in October or November of, September of 2001. It would have had to have been delayed till 2002, probably 2003, unless they made the necessary stage changes and they would have had to have taken out. There's a stage in a city that has a massive skyscraper in the center of it there's no way this game could have had that stage in the early 2000s they would have had to have pulled it or changed it so you can see this is a very slow dogfight some of the later planes and some of the I'll, show, I'll do two missions from the arcade mode and you'll see it's pretty much the same with straight so i need one more win i don't think i actually got that win that last shot down to win in this one I think because this is this plane is so slow to maneuver I mean, it should have been used some of the trick maneuvers but the stage is quite nice with the sort of lightning bolts flying around that was quite cool it would have been nice if the lightnings kind of struck the planes or did something a bit more interesting it's just firing away in the background and you kind of want it sort of actually having some sort of some sort of threat in the stage that you've got to be aware of so maybe you could see where a lightning strike was going to appear and you had to sort of get told maneuver out of the way or you'll get struck by lightning sadly there isn't and instead it's just basically dog fighting over an island those crates do contain power-ups you have to shoot them and then red power-ups are weapons i think the green power-ups are healing yellow power-ups are those one that increases your attack strength, your basic attack strength for like 30 seconds or it turns your gunfire blue as a bomb weapon, which I'm not sure how useful that is because dropping a bomb in a flight game, not really, although it does have a big, a big explosion area when it lands, so basically any plane low to the ground is going to get wiped out. You also have what I think is a couple of homing rocket attacks, which is probably the most useful. So there are, as you see, there are quite a few opponents. I think there's six players in the story mode in one fight but there's at least so you have i'm going to show you all the characters now 
According to Game Facts, there's at least five unlockable characters, I believe, or at least a couple of additional planes and a few characters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight characters by default. There's at least five unlockable characters. Possibly, maybe some of them may just be planes, but on top of this initial eight. So there's quite a lot of content to unlock, in fact. And there's two additional stages I saw to unlock, and also an extreme difficulty as well that's listed as an unlockable. On top of there may be some other unlockables that aren't mentioned or currently listed on sites. He looks like he's in his 90s. Although as this is 20, this game is set in 2040, 2045, I believe it was set in the announcer says at the announcer, yeah, 2045, so that would go probably born about the 60s then. So yeah, this is the arcade mode, and literally it's the same as Quick Bow, it is just dogfighting, and it's just dogfighting after dogfighting after dogfighting. I don't think there's bonus stages or anything between them, so yeah, there's, if you get you get right up close to them you can press x and you can lock on and basically do like a chase cam which is quite fun that's an easy way to take enemies down if you can get into the chase cam you need to get them into red cool. there's three views so you've got this third person view behind the plane you've got there's a first person view where you don't get any of the cockpit or anything it's just purely open skies renting and there's also a cockpit view where you have the cockpit in front of you Now, every time you, I get a kill with this character, I keep going bingo, bingo, and it gets very grating very quickly, I have to admit. On top of the fact, I think I had the same song from the radio about three times in a row, and it was really beginning to drive me a bit crazy. Hence why I turned the sound down a little bit in the background, because it really is quite bland, the music. Although, again, as I mentioned, it is also content ID music, as they actually used a couple of groups... But possibly from Sega's, no, I think Sega's own label had been closed at that point, but Sega US, for some reason, kept wanting to use licensed music, and even at one stage had its own music studio as well, which was just downright bizarre, almost if someone at Sega wanted to become a music artist, and it was their little pet project, or a music producer, pet project, do all this, and then say, oh yeah, we did it for Sega, even though Sega subsequently closed it all down, it cost them a load of money, didn't benefit them, but some probably used it to benefit their career. So I don't know why Sega of the US needed their own soundtrack, and indeed, the Barking Dog Studio Music, they added into a games like Cyber Sled on the Sega Saturn. Barking Dog, I believe, was a Sega-created music band as well it was just terrible the music was totally out of place and ill-fitting in the game compared to the japanese fast-paced rock track and that's the same here this music is totally out of place what you want is probably a bit more probably a touch of classical with a bit of sort of sort of classical because it's slightly star warsy with that sort of dog fighting but you also want a sort of like modern mix with a bit of rock and roll as well mixed in so a bit of combination of everything to give you a sort of a unique soundtrack instead we just have this drowning out singing going on in the background yep so there's hard bullet that's the the gun power up shot this nice to shoot planes easy as you see there this plane they are quite different this plane handles a lot better than the one i used in quick battle the 8-bit this one's actually really fast but it only has two guns and its shots are nowhere near as powerful as the 8-bit one Incidentally, I believe the cockpit designs are actually loosely based on real planes. In fact, they even state the names that they are real planes, that they're using old Metaschmitts and all sorts from the very... Seems weird in 2045 you're dogfighting with old World War II planes. But obviously that's what the... Hell Arena Aviation Battle Championship is all about, and that's with a tongue twister title as well. Hell Arena Aviation Battle Championship. That's definitely a Japanese name. Dominated 
I think there was some suggestion it was just going to be originally called Pellerina Online. Oh, well, there's another thing you can actually stall in this, and although well, it's quite hard to stall, when you do stall, you have to wiggle the analog stick very, very quickly. Uh, you control by the analog stick, use the D-pad to a couple of various options like targeting which enemy you want to do. And you have the change view button, shoot machine gun, fire, secondary weapon if you picked one up. And you also have right trigger is accelerate, you can double tap it to do a quick boost and left trigger is decrease, although you can stall if you go too slow and you can double tap left trigger as well to do a slow down boost. Slowing down enables you to turn quicker, although you're actually better off in this using stunt maneuvers even though I didn't really use in the dogfighting section but I should have done. It's not AM2's finest hour, hour. I have to admit, game AM2 had a bit of a rough patch. You had even Sega towards the end of the Dreamcast, they rushed a lot of those arcade games. Even titles like Out Trigger. I know you get some Dreamcast fans talk about them. Out Trigger is not a very good FPS game. It was all right on the Dreamcast, but when you look at the PC games at that point, and I've been playing games like Shogo, Mobile Armor Division, DSCX, and titles like that on the PC. When these type of games arrived on Dreamcast, these just look thoroughly dated and a bit unenjoyable. Even, I mean, X-Wing, I mean, we've been playing the X-Wing series to death by about this, by when this would have been released on Dreamcast, and I can tell you now, this is not a patch on X-Wing, this is not a patch on TIE Fighter, this is not a patch on X-Wing versus TIE Fighter or X-Wing Alliance. And again, Star Lancer as well on Dreamcast is a vastly better game than this, and Iron Aces. So really this falls in the sort of uneasy ground area that I think it does feel dated when it was released. Having the planes dogfight over cities was not a bright idea, it was a really poor idea and This is regarded as it's an unreleased game, so technically this is an archival purposes because unfortunately it's unlikely I can see this ever getting a re-release. I mean, it'd be nice just for it to get a, an official release, but the problem is even if it got an official release, it would not now. It would basically be we're releasing it for sort of just archival purposes, really. It's, it's not a great game in the slightest. I mean, it might be better with four players if you've got four players in the same room, but it, it's the controls are slow, a lot of the planes don't handle that well, it just, just feels a bit sluggish. It, it, it feels dated on release. Back in 2001, had it been released then, I just feel this is perhaps not AM2's finest hour. I think AM2 were better at driving games and flying games, and even I think titles like Wing Arm on the Saturn were much more interesting with the sort of how that played. I mean, that wasn't the greatest game on the Saturn, but it, it was just a much more interesting sort of game with that. This because it had used these type of planes and just was a bit more fun blowing up enemy bases, etc. This this is just not that fun. It's fun for about ten minutes. You dogfight the enemies, and when you realise that's all you do, it's just an arena-based battle title. It gets pretty boring pretty quickly. So I think I've said my piece there. As always, if you like our content, hit that like button, and as always, if you also enjoy it, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button for full notifications, and as always, thank you for watching us.
The next song is Fighter Flyer.